it's my pleasure to introduce Chris Cole. And uh, Chris is advisor at Parallax Group, and uh, he's currently advising several companies, including 2.6 and Quintessent on advanced optical interfaces. Um, and uh, before Parallax, uh, Chris was VP of Advanced Development at Finisar Corporation, where he led the definition and delivered uh, all the generation of 10 through 400 gigabit per second optical interfaces for datacom and telecom applications. Uh, he, Chris has delivered multiple generations of optical transceivers, leading to billions of dollars of uh, Finisar revenue. Um, the 40, 100, 200, and 400 gig interfaces he defined and proposed for IEEE standardization constitute the majority of optical data com links in data centers and account for billions of optics industry revenue. And uh, Chris received his BS in aeronautics and astronautics and his BS and MS in electrical engineering from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And he is an IEEE and Optica fellow. Chris, thanks very much. Your talk is titled Data Center Energy Savings in This Decade. Over to you. Okay, can you uh, see the screen? Yeah, you have a box that says, please move this window away oh, in the yeah. middle. If it's possible to deal with that, that would be great. If not, we'll, uh, oh, it's faded out. Great. I'm due for a new laptop. So uh, um, that's okay. Um, let's see what happens with it. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, just review where we are today and, and take a look at backwards uh, and then fairly me mechanistically predict what will happen in this decade. Uh, I've done this a number of times before at conferences in IEEE, but I have the latest data, uh, which kind of reinforces this formula. Um, and I'll make a couple observations and make some suggestions where the real wins are in terms of energy use for the data center in this decade. Um, this is a slide which uh, shows you what the high, how yeah, this thing is annoying. Uh, let me just hold on a second. Okay. <clears throat> How's that? Looks good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, so this just reviews uh, the history of optics uh, from 10G uh, to where we are today at 400G. Uh, and we've had uh, five generations of technology starting at 10 gig per wavelength, 25, 50, uh, and 100, sorry, four, four generations. Um, <clears throat> and we're all familiar with these. These are the major codes, um, uh, LR, CWDM4, uh, and we're now shipping um, FR4, DR4, 400G, which gets split out, uh, and same thing for 200G. And we can come back to this if there's specific questions, but I think uh, this is all uh, familiar stuff. Uh, so let me move on to the data. Uh, this is uh, uh, how I like to slice. Uh, this is from Light Counting, which uh, great uh, organization for collecting data. Um, uh, this, this, is a, this is their latest report that I got. So they published this uh, in December um, and the actual data they have is up through uh, last summer. Uh, so I have an annual volume here, which is second half of 20 uh, and first half of 21. I presented something similar at the IEEE uh, early, about a year ago, um, and it was data through the end of 20. <clears throat> so this is more recent data. Um, but what we see is the highest volume. Oh, and uh, let me just explain the axes. So uh, on the x-axis, what we have is uh, gigabit uh, ethernet rate. Uh, so this is the, the, the rate on the link. Uh, the gray are the, the serial links which carry that rate and the red are WDM or PSM links that carry that rate. And I would argue that this is the way that our customers, meaning the network engineers look at. We, we get very excited about how many links we have in a box or in a, in, a, in a module or a tile, but all the network guys really care about is they draw a line from one place to another uh, and, and they care about what's the rate on that line. And, and they really don't care about much else. So, so this, is, uh, this is kind of the end customer perspective. 
Um, so what we see is the greatest number of links that's still shipping, and it's actually modestly growing, is 10G. That's at 10 million links. This is all Ethernet, by the way. Uh, the next highest is, uh, uh, is 100G. Uh, it's nearly 6 million. Um, and in fact, it's 10 million if you add the 3 million uh, 100G serial links that are shipping. So, so the thing that's really shipping in volume is 10 and 100G. Um, the 40G has been flat at about a million for quite a while, and, and it's actually slightly decreasing. Um, but the thing that's really coming up fast is the 200G. So here it's, uh, it's almost a million for that uh, period of time, it's, it's gonna be over a million for 2021. Uh, I'm pretty confident when that comes out, uh, that's the one that's, that's growing fast. The other one that's growing fast is 400G, although it's, it's really still at, at, at very uh, small numbers. There, there's hardly any 400G uh, link deployment. Um, let's see, what else is interesting here? Uh, 50G serial, almost no volume. Um, 25G serial, uh, interesting volume of 2 million. Um, so uh, all kinds of interesting conclusions there. Anyway, this is, uh, this is hard data and then uh, all of us can take turns putting a spin on it. Um, so what I've done is I've taken data like that um, and what I've said is that the anchor point for the industry is the IEEE 802.3. That's where everybody gets together and that's where things get standardized. And <laughs> I came up with a formula based on what happened at 10, 40, 100 uh, gig, uh, actually even going back to one gig in terms of predicting um, how optics will grow in the future. And I'm not gonna go through this in detail. Again, if there's I, I've done this before, and if there's specific questions, uh, we can certainly go back to this, uh, but this is two and 400 G SMF predictions. Um, the, the formula uh, for this, for the first million, which is really the important shipment, is that it's four years after, for a minor rate, after the uh, standard is adopted, and it's six years after uh, for the major rate, meaning involving a new technology. Um, and so for a number of years, so th this is a prediction that could have been made four years ago, and I've been doing that. Um, the 2021 prediction is looking very solid. I mean, it, it, it is going to come true. Um, so that's pretty solid. Um, and if you, again, extrapolate, continue to extrapolate the 400 gig rate, it looks like we'll hit a million in 2023. So these predictions, which have been sitting around for quite a while, are actually quite solid. And then if you go back to 10 and 40 and 100 G, what you find is you, you, you get it almost exactly the same. So, um, you know, with each generation, we tell ourselves it's going to be different this time because, you know, now we have text, now we're sh sending pictures around, we're sending video around, and it's going to change things around. But the thing we forget is human beings don't change. And innovation pretty much happens at a constant rate. So th this is actually a pretty good predictor. Um, okay, so here, here I'm starting to get into a crystal ball, but this is my prediction of future high volume ethernet optics. And again, these are the high volume optics. There is nothing else um, that, that hits these kinds of volumes. <clears throat> so for, uh, sorry, just to go back here. Um, here, this is the 12.8 switch node, uh, which is shipping today, either in a 64 or 128 radix configuration primarily. Uh, and people are either using uh, existing 100G or single wavelength 100G um, for 64 radix, it's 200. Um, and then again, very low volume here because 32 radix, uh, I guess is not terribly useful. So this is uplinks or something. Um, so if we go back, uh, if we now start to predict the future, uh, we have 25.6 and 51 uh, T switches. Uh, we're going to see uh, one more bump in the IO density. 
I'm not going to differentiate with how that's um, uh, with how that's going to play out. Uh, but I think we're going to see the same thing. We're going to see very high volume of 200 GFR4 and a QF, QSFP56 supporting 25.6. And we're also going to see a uh, very high volume and, and 200 G single wavelength at some point uh, supporting. And these are both radix of uh, 128. Um, we're also going to see a high volume of uh, 64 radix, which is going to be uh, 400 G. Uh, and then again, 800 G, which we're looking at standardizing now, whether that's FR8 or FR4, is going to see very modest volume because at a radix of 32, I'm being told that's not very interesting. Um, and that's fully supported with existing OSFP and QSFP technology. Um, and then for the 51.2T node, um, again, we're going to see very similar 64 and 128 radix. Um, and that's fully supported in an OSFP XD with 100 GIO, uh, which is going to support the two or three years where we um, have this node with 100 GIO, and then OSFP with 200 G uh, IO is going to support um, uh, the 256 by 200. Um, so for these two switch nodes, uh, we're fully covered with existing technology. Um, and, and this is well proven, um, you know, people are very conservative. If you can do it how you've been doing it, uh, very unlikely to change. And I'm going to turn the crank again. So remember what we did last time is we predicted 400, um, uh, 200 and 400. So now I'm going to predict 800 and 1600, uh, as well as 200 single wavelengths. Um, and so what we see is for 200G single wavelength, we'll probably hit uh, first million in 2028. For 800G, we'll hit the first million in 2029. And uh, 1.6 Tera won't hit uh, first million until at least a decade from now. Um, OK. So um, let's take a look at uh, now at energy use. Um, so what I've put here are the uh, the high volume transceivers, the mainstream transceivers at all the major uh, technology points. So we we have I, I put GBIC here because you'll see I needed a reference point uh, to do a delta. Uh, so we have a one gig, ten gig, twenty five, fifty, and a hundred gig per wavelength technology. Uh, again, very familiar modules, uh, QSFP uh, and OSFP. Um, and the column I have here is watts at 1 million shipment. So some of these things like 100G and 10G, when they started out, I mean, these were over 20 watt modules, but they went through six, seven generations of reduction. Um, the 200 and 400, they've actually started out uh, uh, at, at lower rates. Uh, but these are... Um, these are numbers, obviously here we're, we're predicting what's gonna happen. Um, uh, and again, you know, these are rough numbers. Uh, if, if somebody wants to come up and says, hey, we've got a four watt module, uh, you know, great. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna argue with that. Um, uh, these are just numbers I pulled off uh, by surveying a few, few parts that I could get info on. Um, so what we see is, you know, 100 Gs at about three watts. Uh, 200G is somewhat lower. Uh, I'm showing it at five watts. Uh, I, I've seen numbers four and a half. Um, the 400G or DR4 started out 12 to 14 watts. I, I think people are saying eight watts now for the second generation stuff that's, that's going to be shipping, that's shipping in volume. So if we convert that to picojoules per bit, uh, what we see is, um, you know, some drastic reduction, uh, but then a real plateauing. Um, so what I did here at the last line is I said percentage delta versus prior rate. So I, I just divided this column by this column uh, to get the percentage, right? So this is five times 100. Um, and what we see is that at the Tenji node, um, we had a dramatic reduction in energy efficiency versus one gig. And same thing for a hundred gig. Um, 
you know, again, dramatic reduction versus 10G. And that was not by accident. The industry really focused in making huge investment in those technologies uh, to really drive the energy uh, and, and cost down as well. Um, I'm, we're discussing energy here, but, but the, that investment paid off in, in two ways. But if we look at 50 and 100G technology, what we see is there's very little um, in terms of energy use reduction uh, compared to the prior rates. I mean, we, we really are dramatically plateauing. So 100G was about 30 picojoules per bit, and we're looking at 20 picojoules per bit uh, for these 100G per wavelength technology. Um, so now comes the fun part, because you know <laughs> we can all uh, 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 give our own uh, insights into why this is, but I'll give you mine. Um, so let's start out with observations. Um, the high volume optics that we'll use this decade are 10, 25, 50, and 100. Uh, 200 gig per wavelength optics will not see volume till the end of the decade. It doesn't mean we're not gonna see you know, low, low volumes like we've seen with all the other things, but in terms of significant volume, uh, you saw the predictions 20, 28, 29, 31. Uh, pluggable modules, uh, QSFT and OSFT variants uh, will fully support all the switches that are of interest uh, to people through 51T. Uh, and pluggable modules will be the high volume form factor. You know, there may be some niche uh, deployment of, of other uh, approaches, but this is going to be the bread and butter. Um, what is true is that investment in 50G per wavelength optics has been limited, and that was deliberate, to focus on 100G per second optics. Uh, but what's interesting about that is this is the first wavelength technology generation that deliberately has seen an underinvestment. Um, I've not been in optics my whole career, but I've, I've seen it at least since, since uh, GIG, and I've never quite seen this. This is very unusual. Um, and the interesting result is that, uh, you know, 100G is certainly a stretch, um, but neither 50 nor 100 has seen significant uh, energy decrease, unlike before. Um, now, you know, you can, everybody can come up with their reasons, but uh, I'm, I'm going to put this down on the bullet point and maybe it will lead to an interesting discussion. Um, which leads me to, if we're really serious about serving, saving energy in this decade, uh, not in the next decade, but this decade, um, we should restore investment in 50 gigabits uh, per second wavelengths. The, the, the train has somewhat left the station, uh, so we're going to have to live with the decisions we made five or six years ago, uh, but there's still major opportunities. Um, you know, the, the, the end users can certainly go to the ACID guys and say, we want you to, uh, uh, you know, migrate your, your FIs into five nanometers or three nanometers. I mean, right there, we're talking about just huge amount of energy savings by simple things like that. But somebody's going to have to pay for it. Um, and frankly, I don't think it will happen, which leads me to believe that energy use is actually not that important because... If you have a clear situation where someone can take dollars and save a ton of energy and it's not done, it, it says it's just, it, we're just talking about it. Now, I think the real opportunity lies in concentrating investment in 100 gig per wavelength. Let's kind of recognize what happened in the last five, six years. Um, you know, we've been after 100 G now for many years. And so let's really get a payoff for this focus on 100 G and sort of not repeat the, the 50G mistake and now jump to 200G. Um, and, and, you know, we'll have this conversation again in six years and say, gee, why isn't our energy going down? Um, be, and, you know, I'll, I'll just take this, this, this presentation and double every number in here and say, well, that's, that's why. So I think th these are the, if we're really serious about energy use, uh, these are the concrete steps that can be taken that will actually make a difference. Thank you. Great. Um, thanks very much, Chris, for that, uh, that historical perspective and that uh, forecast going forwards.